Uh, we're going to focus on Dean Smith in the Premier League, Aston Villa. Now, Mike, we've seen lots of sides come up from the Championship and go straight back down. Fulham and West Brom, of course, the latest of those to uh, return to the Championship. But Villa have remained in the top flights and Dean Smith must take a lot of credit for that. Dean Smith, not just a manager who is appointed to do to do the job, he is appointed to build a culture and a philosophy and an identity and that is seemingly what he's done at Villa and that has certainly helped them at least have some stability in their first season back in the Premier League. Yes, I do believe culture is the big word here. I think Dean Smith is all about culture. There's a, a fantastic video I found on YouTube actually looking ahead to this podcast of him doing a talk at Birmingham University about culture and he defined it as environment. You know, that, that was what he saw it as. But it was like, he started this talk and it was almost like um, he was... A bit apprehensive about why you're asking me about culture. And yet, then he just effortlessly went into a talk about culture. And it just this is, this is a great example of how managers, how all of us don't necessarily know what it is that we're so good at. You know, we, have, we all have this kind of genius state and an effortless flow state. But because it's subconscious, because it comes so natural, we don't sometimes don't actually know it's what we're good at. And this is Dean Smith all over. It's about creating the right environment. It's about group culture. It's about setting in place, you know, putting in place a set of core values that everybody follows. And when everybody follows them, things go well. And that's basically his managerial style in, his nut, in a nutshell. His philosophy isn't necessarily a, a football identity, a, a certain way of playing the game. It's about how everybody conducts themselves behind the scenes and the things that they buy into. And, you know, one of the things that struck me most about what he said about environment, about culture. It is when you walk into a football club, it should be something you can see, it should be something you can hear, it should be something you can feel. The sights, the sounds, the you know, the feelings, as soon as you walk into a building, are all positive. Everybody's happy, everybody wants to be working together, everybody respects each other. And that is Dean Smith in a nutshell. Yeah, that, I've got that quote written down as well, actually, from that video, because that was something that stood out to me. Uh, the other thing, actually, um, and if you do get a chance to watch the video, it's really interesting, but it's right at the start of this. He talks about his time at Walsall, and he said that when he went in, the first thing he wanted to do, as well as make players better footballers, was make them better people. You know, he's a very principled, very humble man, and he just wants to make these young players into very upstanding citizens and to go out and represent the club and represent themselves and their families and just, you know, play with a, a real pride and a real honour. Yeah, it's a big driving force for him, his people development. And, you know, he's, he's very interested in players' backgrounds. He's very interested in, like, he kind of sees it as the person that comes to me has got an identity. You know, a player comes under my wing, he's got an identity. And that identity is to do with his background, it's to do with his family, it's to do with all his past experiences were kind of all the products of everything that's gone before. But, I, you know, what your identity is now and what you've had up to this point doesn't determine your future. And I want to help you grow in the future. It's all about growth, personal development, everybody trying to be the best version that they can be. And if he can help along in that process, then that, that's what really juices him. That's what really excites him. It's, it's just to be able to see people grow as people. It's this school teacher thing again. You know, we talked about Ivelko Paunovic last weekend. Uh, you know, it, it's that thing of of wanting to take your own experiences, understand another person's experiences, but put in place a system and a set of values and a way of going about your business that just automatically guarantees that they go off into the world as better people in the future. And that that's you know that's what that that's a flow state for Smith. That's what he likes to do. You know, and it, and it, he talks about when he went in at Walsall, he was a reluctant leader. He didn't even want the job in the first place. But once he came to realise that aligning, you know, this way of developing people, well, that's management. That is football management as well. It's probably a very undervalued aspect of football management. Um, but once he realised that, hang on, this is football management, what I do so naturally anyway, then he's like, right, well, OK, yeah, I do want to be a football manager then. This is me. This is this is the way I'm going to shake a, club, a football club up from top to bottom and, and turn it into a Dean Smith club. Yeah, and he talks about the player who um, came to him with, uh, I think he said, a sausage sandwich uh, head of training, and he wasn't very pleased about it. But when he dug deep and he found out, he, he found out that this this particular player lived with, I think he said, their grandparents, and he didn't want to bother them for breakfast. So this is all he could get his hands on ahead of training. 
and he sort of spoke and said, well, it's something I didn't quite get at first. It's not something that I've experienced, but I had to learn about it and cater for that particular player. And then goes on to end the story by saying, well, we sold him for £1.25 million in the end. So clearly this player, you know, was having a few issues personally and Dean Smith was the man to, to help him through that. And yeah, there's just a there's just a nice way, a nice sort of almost fatherly way about Dean Smith, isn't there, with these younger players. Hence why, at all the clubs he's been at, there's always been a really good contingent of, of youth players. Yeah, and, and he has got a good record, I believe, for selling players as well for profit, you know, because he is developing people. He's developing them as better players and giving them his core set of values. Uh, it was interesting as well, you know, when he talks about that particular player, he's saying, you know, it was picking up somebody else's litter off the floor that made him think, hang on, we've got something here. This, the message is landing. We might have a player on our hands because he's picking up litter in the canteen behind someone and not making a fuss about it. It's just an effortless, natural reaction. And he's thinking, right, things are sinking in here. You know, a player who a few disciplinary problems at the beginning. Now we've got a young man that can go forward. And I noticed when he first came into the job at Aston Villa, and, you know, it's a very difficult club to manage, especially in the championship where they were when he first arrived. You know, big expectations. And one of the first things he noticed, I remember his very, possibly his very first interview, post-match interview, was that the first thing he picked up on was players throwing their arms at other players when a misplaced pass or they weren't given the ball, things like that. These are cues he's very, very aware of. You know, that that is sends off really bad signals. You're in a stadium where fans can jump on players' backs for a misplaced pass and things like that. You don't want the players encouraging it as well and making, you know, almost acting as a cue for the supporters to get on players' backs. We can see how all these dynamics play out in so many different ways. When someone's so sensitive to these little things and, and the, the, the knock-on effects they can have and how it affects performance, you know, you can, you can begin to join the dots of like and begin to understand why we should value it more even though we can't put a metric on some of these things it has a value clearly but he does talk about when he came in at Villa he he really wanted to manage that club you know it feels like Dean Smith would never just take a leap and would never just join a club that wasn't right for him he said he spoke at length with the uh, the chairman and the owners and decided that yeah the culture was right for uh, changing and for building at Villa and it was just a good fit from the top all the way down, I think was the quote he said. So, yeah, Dean Smith, never a man who's going to make hasty decisions and chose his club well, it appears. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I mean, it, obviously, there's got to be some romance in there as a Villa fan, as a kid, you know. And we talk about identity and past experiences being part of your identity. And, you know... Whenever he talks about Villa, he's got so many stories to tell about his past. So he understands what the culture of the club should be, you know. He, he just needs the buy-in from all the people around him and the people that he, you know, within a club that he has to work alongside and, and who make decisions, you know, the important decisions that impact him. So long as he's got that, you know, those people in the middle that are willing to... Him basically reconjure this his memories of what Aston Villa should be as a club... And, and put the, the, the sort of wheels in place to create that again in the future, then, yeah, I think those were the ans kind of answers he needed. But there must have been an awful lot of romance there for, you know, a Birmingham-born lad who, with so many past anecdotes and stories he's told about his background in the area and supporting the Villa. Yeah, and talking about the club, he said that at the start of each season, I don't know if you've ever come across this before, Mike, I don't know how many managers you've seen do this, but he said he sits the players down at the start of each season and he says, right, time to come up with three words that you want to associate with this club this season. And he doesn't give them any suggestions. You know, he doesn't chip in. He lets the players decide for themselves three words that will identify this club and the way that we approach games this season. And I just thought that was, um, it, it's one of those things that you kind of expect, you know, in business, but not necessarily at a football club. Yeah, that's it. Values is, uh, it's very common of managers of his type. Um to, 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 to define what our values are and to give the players ownership in those values and everybody around the club. everybody Because you need everybody invested. You need everybody bought in. So they've got to... You can't just throw three words at people and say, this is what we stand for. And they, they, there's no if there's no ownership there, then can you really expect them to buy into those values and live them out day in, day out, every day? And so, obviously, it's a big part of his process. And I think, yeah, it's one of those things you hear about often. It's only now through personality typology I begin to understand that this is a, 
a particular function, a certain type of manager that does this more than others. Um, but yeah, I think that sums him up. It, it is all about... It, it Basically, Dean Smith wants to create... It's almost like creating a system of how people conduct themselves, how people behave, but knowing that it's going to run even when you're not there. That he could walk away for two weeks and just walk in without any notice and see exactly what he wants to see in terms of player behaviour, player conduct, the respect and things that go on. But an, another interesting thing also as well is, you know, is is how how keen he is on those words and, and, the def- and how, how really important they are. Because I noticed they mentioned, you know, one of the words he wanted to promote at Brentford when he was at Brentford was honesty. And he turned around and said, I can't really get on board with honesty because that means if a player's crap, I've got to tell him he's crap and I don't. I, it's not going to help me do my job if we do that. So honesty is not really a word I can get on board with. So, you know, you can see the nuance there between these words and why it matters. And I think sometimes to have something so simple as just three words... But then you really you think about them day in day out those words and they're constantly refreshed. I think it could go a long way because it's it's being able to distill a whole mindset into something so small that's easy to remember. And he's a, a manager who, as well, is you know develops players as you say, improves them as as people. But he's not shy of developing himself either. He's talked about how he's learnt over the years to delegate a little more. Um, to use his words, take a more holistic view of what is going on at Villa. He says sometimes he just lets um, the coaches get on with the training because he knows they're very good. That's why they're, they're there in the first place. And he just stands at a distance and watches. He said the only the best way to get an overview is by watching from afar, not actually rolling your sleeves up and getting involved. Not to say he doesn't do that, but occasionally he'll take a step back. But he talks about it's something he's learned over the years to do as opposed to just always being there right in the centre. Yeah, absolutely. And this is this speaks to, you know, the way he learns and the way he goes about through the world is, you know, it's about real world experience. It's about but slowly developing real world experience over time. The, you know, he wasn't like this initially, but this this shows Dean Smith becoming a better and better manager over the years, being able to do this. Managers of this type, this is kind of an indicator that yeah, this is a manager that's growing and getting better over time, not just he's got this skill set, he brings this skill set, he's always kind of going to be the same. He might shoot for the stars one with one club and then his next job might, you know, this is this is gradual but but reliable development over time. And, and yeah, it's that that's a good example of how experience looks in, you know, in his type. And clearly taking things on board all the time. Um, says that, uh, well, first of all, he won't want to make any of his staff do anything that he wasn't comfortable with. He talks about how the best lessons that he learned were actually from the managers that he hated working under or disagreed with or didn't like their approach. You know, he said, well, I won't be doing that. So I'll be doing, you know, inverting that and doing the opposite. So taking things on board all the time, clearly learned a lot from, from those experiences that he had as a player. And yeah, just constantly evolving, I think, is 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 how we would look at Dean Smith's time at Villa and that is yeah that's positive going forward isn't it because Villa are probably going to make a few signings this summer and he meets every player as well before signing them so yeah as you say got to get the recruitment right got to be the right mindset got to have the right culture it all sits well for next season doesn't it yeah well it's interesting you mentioned recruitment because as well one of the things one of the fascinating things I find about Dean Smith as well is that his ability to integrate players of all different backgrounds. You know, he's at Brentford, there's a lot of foreign players from lots of different countries who hadn't even necessarily played in big leagues, never mind the, the English leagues, you know. Uh, they'd come from remote outposts and were all kind of brought together into a new country. And his ability to integrate people quickly is very, you know, I think Villa's record of, of buying players for, from different backgrounds and then making an impact relatively quickly is impressive and that's Dean Smith that's Dean Smith bringing in someone into a totally new environment and making them feel comfortable straight away so that they feel able to hit the ground running and, and, and you know deliver the best performances quite quickly so yeah I think that's a big part of you know that I'm sure the recruitment you know there's a whole recruitment department that, that are going to be sort of reliable for the relied upon for the transfers and, and, and the quality of the players that are brought in but one thing you get with Dean Smith is usually players more than than at most other clubs and potentially with most other managers will settle to a greater ratio, but also a lot quicker as well. Yeah, absolutely. And he uh, mentions 
uh, to the fact that if any player is left out of the starting eleven or indeed the squad, he will meet with them during the week and he will sit them down and explain calmly why they are not featuring, whether it's tactical or whether they've not been putting enough effort in training. You know, he's not afraid to tell players exactly where they stand, but that is a good thing because he says the amount of times that, that he and some of his fellow players during his career were just left out of the team with no explanation and then didn't kind of know where they where they were standing. He definitely likes to communicate and I guess you're going to buy goodwill from your players even if you leave them out of the 18 by explaining, well, this is why I've done it. Yeah, most definitely. And I think this goes back to what you said about, uh, you know, in learning from the things that other managers did wrong, is taken more from those instances rather than being inspired by what they did right. Uh, And I think things like that can fester, you know. I think this is all, again, it's about the culture, the environment. In the long run, if you've got four or five different players who don't necessarily know where they stand within a squad and have been dropped and never really understood the reasons, these things play on the mind. They can fester over time. And then, you know, those players might become bad apples that might have a little few things to say behind the manager's back or, you know, in, in the corridors and stuff like that. That doesn't happen because, you, you you know, communication's a real big thing for him. Everybody has to know where they stand, need to be one or not. You know, take, player, play, take players as well away from the group environment, get them private one-to-one. Let's, you know, sit down. I'll, I'll explain my reasons. I might be wrong. It's my opinion. The only thing you can do is basically go out and show me what I'm missing and I will come back to you and admit that I'm wrong. So, yeah, I think it's a, a, a very big part of his managerial style. And finally, Mike, I haven't seen the odds for the Premier League season 2021-2022, but I imagine that Villa will be in the uh, certainly the lower third uh, and will be, I guess, you know, reasonably priced up to to stay in the division. But do you think that under Smith they can they can aim much higher? Uh, well, I think last season was a very interesting season in that I thought Villa were fantastic in the first half of the season. Uh, I saw them when they came to Manchester City and City won the game tournament around January time. Uh, but they were so, so dangerous on the counter-attack. They had a very real threat that you could feel. They had a front four that were just interchanging so well, so difficult to play against. And I think there was a lot of performances in the first half of the season uh, that were fantastic in terms of, you know, underlying XG data, performance data, not necessarily converted fully into results. But then in the second half of the season, you know, most of this was on the counter-attack, the real threat on the counter-attack. I think teams sussed them out a little bit and kind of sat back and said, you know, OK, we'll invite you on and see how you cope with that. Big difference. First half of the season, 32 points. Second half of the season, 23 points. You know, there's a marked difference there. So now the kind of this known quantity, having finished 11th, just escaped relegation by the skin of the teeth the season before. I think the truth right now is somewhere in between, you know, and I think a big part of what the future looks like for Villa under Dean Smith is can Villa grow at the rate of some of their players? Um, Because Smith has talked about what he's got to be comfortable with players for his own conscience. Players have got to be able to fly the nest. If they've got bigger growth opportunities elsewhere, I can't afford to stand in the way Otherwise, I become a hypocrite. So you think about Jack Grealish and players like that. Does there become a point where their development is best elsewhere? Villa need to try to keep up with the players that they're developing and keep Smith's conscience clear that he's able, that everything's able to grow at the same rate. So I think that's the big dilemma for Villa going forward. I think right now I see them as, yeah, probably, uh, you know, lower mid-table kind of team is the starting point for next season. But... I think it's important they get off to a good start that they don't get dragged back into a rut of, you know, a relegation rut where it feels like everybody sussed them out because I don't think the football side, the tactical side, I don't think there's any massive edge there compared to other clubs. So, you know, a good start could be essential. 